What's up guys? Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machining Tool back here again for Practical Machinists. We are live from IMTS 2022 in Chicago once again and I have a little bit of a surprise for you guys. Today we are joined by someone who you may recognize from his own video series, Learn to Burn on the Practical Machinist YouTube channel, my friend Steve Michon from Zero Tolerance. How's it going? Good, nice, nice to be here. Good to see you. And of course, we are here at MC Machinery Systems with Mike and Alan. Hello. Nice now, what you. are we looking at here behind us? This is obviously a wire machine, but I think it's a little different than the average wire machine. It's our MV2400R. And what we're, we're just simulating basically the burn of the Chicago skyline. So we thought we'd pay a little tribute to IMTS being Chicago here after four years. So we wanted to do a little profile of the uh, cityscape and show you. We're also demonstrating our threading ability the MV2400 has annealing for, uh, to straighten the wire, and basically what that means is it allows to thread in difficult situations, whether it be just simply straight through or through interrupted, it can handle all types of situations. And as a guy who does a lot of high, big, thick stuff when you're going through to thread, what does that look like to you? That looks like a challenge, um, but with this machine, I've been very impressed with the ability that it has uh, coming from a machine that didn't have threading, which I can't imagine anyone has that today. Absolute necessity to have. Um, and, and Mike here knows how to help you when you do have trouble, and he's helped me personally. So this machine does a fantastic job at a lot of different things. Because you but do have one of these at your shop. I do have one of these in the shop. I used it three days ago where I had to pull a large slug out of a pocket for a mold base. So phenomenal machine. I, I wouldn't have another one. And what are some of the main features of this that you like? Because obviously you're a guy who's been in the industry for a long time. What are the same, some of the things that you really think this does well? What it does well is it does overnight machining very well. You can get a good setup in there and you can do a lot of cool features. Super high tolerance, lights out machining. That's what, that's what we try to achieve. Um, we try to make it as perfect as we can at zero tolerance. So that's what that I, would, I would give this absolutely the best, best rating. Because especially if you're running overnight, you know, as someone who, I have a very old wire machine, but if you're not there to monitor it and the wire gets snarled, you could lose eight, 10, 12 hours overnight if the machine's not capable of resetting itself. And you're saying this thing, you trust full, you walk away and it's good to go. There's been hiccups for sure. When you have a, a, something that goes wrong, things go wrong. Our, we had a bad program that was our fault. The machine would actually stop itself and it would, I would look on my phone and I could see it remotely. So industry 4.0, I was connected to the machine and of course I couldn't leave it. I had to come up to the shop and get it going again. And that's actually what happened to me the other night when the wire was stuck trying to do a finish in the gap. I actually went there and fixed it and got it running for the rest of the night, so. And what I'm seeing right cool. here, I think I'm looking at this right. This is a four axis tool path. Am I correct? It, it is not. It's just a simple two axis, two but axis. the block is elevated like a 30 degree angle. Right, and what's the real challenge for people who may not be familiar with EDM? What's the real challenge in that? The, the, the challenge for this is like, we we're again trying to demonstrate the auto threader. So actually what we were doing is threading straight through the hole and actually going through the kerf and threading at that angle Ooh. through the kerf, non-submerged. So there was, we're trying to again show what kind of what Steve said that the ability of the auto threader is really the key for unattended operation. So that's what we're trying to demonstrate. And especially even just for those who don't know, when you're cutting with wire EDM, as I'm sure you can attest, you want really good flushing. If you don't have good flushing, it can be difficult. With a cut like this, this machine has to have really good flushing in order to work that far off the top. Well, and also the, the machine kind of has its own AI or what we call power master. So basically as the machine's burning, it detects live in the gap, the conditions automatically adjust itself to the, to the cut to get the optimal performance. Absolutely. Now, kind of just panning over this way a little bit, this is the big brother to the machine right behind me, but there's something attached to the machine over here. I don't know if you can see it there. We're not gonna walk right over there. What's that big gray thing attached to that machine? It is a six axis uh, articulating robot. So that thing can load, reload, do everything that needs to be done. Everything that needs to be done. And that's kind of what we're showing here that again, going back to a lights out operation that you could run the machine for, you know, 24 seven lights out. And is this something you're looking to put in your shop next? Oh, I'd love to have this in my shop for sure. And is this more of a production style setup? In some cases it can be with wire EDM. It all depends on the application because typically slug management is an issue. So we would have to base it on the application. Absolutely. Now, 
These are the wiring off wire offerings we are seeing here. I believe there's another kind of machine we want to take a look at. Steve, what's that called? Uh, it's an Eagle 800 um, gantry machine. It's well, follow me. We'll take a look. Let's at go it. take a peek. So I'm assuming that I'm standing in front of the right machine here because it says Eagle on it. What are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at a, a, a large, for, for us anyways, this is a large, uh, a large EDM, a large sinker EDM. Uh, we do all of our die mold uh, burns on it. It is a very valuable tool in our shop. And the capabilities of this machine, the speed, the wear, it is, it's increased our profitability, our efficiency. Uh, and our throughput in our shop tremendously as we've learned more and more how, it, how to use it with the help of service. Um, we have really, I, I will recommend this machine to everybody that does EDM. And what kind of work do you do on this that you probably couldn't do on some other kind of sinker machine? What does this really excel at? I, it, it actually excels in a lot of different areas. One is just the speed of the burn itself. Another one is um, being able to program vector burns on different angles. As you can see right here in the demo, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually coming in and doing um, an arc as it burns in. Uh, we call that a vector burn at our shop. And what is that useful for? Where does, where does that really excel when you're doing those vector burns? Vector burns come in for injection molding, it's where the subgate is. You're coming in on an angle with the cones to feed the, the actually the part uh, with plastic. So that part's very critical for what we do. And in every tool we have, we pretty much have that in it. So. It's, it's super powerful and fast. So you do a lot of mold work with this. Is that pretty traditional use for a machine like this? For this machine, yes, absolutely. But it, does it do production stuff? Absolutely. We've done multiple parts, um, hundreds of different things. Um, but we don't do a lot of production. Most of our stuff is building tools in, at our shop. And one of the videos I saw that you put out recently, you did a fishing lure. Was that in this machine? That was in this machine. I actually had lots of little tiny spikes and uh, small <laughs> points of contact and all the way into a large contact surface which a lot of conventional EDMs that I've run in the past have struggled to do though all in one. So this machine, like he said, will compensate um, and, and actually get the optimized voltage and power settings to work and it, and it worked out perfect. I used one electrode to do it. It wasn't aluminum, I'll give it that, but any other machine I've used, it would have wore that electrode pretty bad, so. And is that typically, is this actual, I'm not familiar with Sync EDM, is this pretty typical uh, cutting conditions or would it usually be submerged in oil? It would definitely be submerged in oil. The whole tank comes up and it fills up with the dielectric fluid and the better fluid you have, the better burns you'll get. So that's a key part of it as well. And are you looking to put another one of these on the floor? As long as I can take this one with me, yes, I would put this on the floor. Guys, you hear that? He needs it. And I need another bag. one, yeah. What do we have coming up in the next uh, little bit from Mitsubishi Materials for MC uh, Machinery? Is there any new technology coming out that we should be paying attention to? Well, uh, new technology, no, but we do have a new sinker that we did release, right, for Mitsubishi, so the SG die Series, die sinking. So, Excellent. So if people want to find out, debuting, so. and if people want to find out more about that, where can we find you guys online? Uh, www.mcmachinery.com. And of course, if they want to see it live, they can come right here to IMTS. They can come right here to IMTS, and we're excited to show it to you. And make sure you guys check out See Me Sean and the Learn to Burn series on Practical Machinists, where you can see this thing put through its paces in many different scenarios. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.